The purpose of Free Thought Forum is to be vigilant to the encroachment of religion into government and to educate the general public as to what a free thinker is. My thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them. No hunter can trap them. No person can deny. Die Gedanken sind frei. No person can deny. Hi, welcome to the Free Thought Forum. I'm your host for tonight, Jeff Levan, and tonight we're going to be discussing a subject of been quite some controversy lately, uh, drug legalization, and specifically marijuana legalization. And uh, today with our guest is uh, Julian Ward from uh, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Jeff. I wanted to ask you, uh, since it's been in the news and, and we've had some people come out uh, that you wouldn't expect, like William F. Buckley, and mm -hmm. say that they want to legalize uh, at least some drugs. Right. Uh, I thought I might ask you, uh, how, what is normal and how did it get started? Okay, normal, or the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, started out as a consumer lobby at, in October 1970, by, founded by Keith Stroop of an organization. Excuse me. Um, it was founded as a consumer lobby, lobby to protect the the estimated 15 million marijuana users at the time, but has grown into an organization that uh, that wants the excuse me, <laughs> get this right. Uh, it has grown into a more a broader organization that defends the rights of people that use and need marijuana for the medical aspects of it. So it's uh, so it's gone on to defend. Uh all aspects of marijuana, but it right. deals sp specifically with marijuana, right? Right, with just with other... marijuana. Uh, we have a policy at Normal that we only support the legalization of marijuana. We do not support the legalization of any other drugs. Does that mean that they specifically don't support the legalization? In other words, that they would they would want other drugs to be illegal, or does that just mean that they're concentrating on, on uh, marijuana? No, just uh, just want marijuana to be illegal because marijuana is different from other drugs in that it's non-toxic. It takes an estimated 15,000 pounds of marijuana to be consumed in 15 minutes in order to get a lethal overdose from THC. So in other words, the active ingredient, THC, is, right. not, is not deadly in most... Right, uh, it's non-toxic. ...in the form that it's available in. Right. I did some, uh, some reading on the subject, and I came across some, some interesting books. So one of them, which I don't have here today, it's, it's out recently, called Intoxication. And the other one is, is this book called The Natural Mind by Andrew Weil, and uh, in it he has a pretty interesting hypothesis, sort of this, well, pretty interesting ideas, and he and this guy who wrote Intoxication both agree, and they're both doctors, they both agree that, that mankind has an innate drive to get high, to, mm -hmm. to get an altered state of consciousness, either through uh, religious ceremonies or, or uh, uh, you'll see native tribes jumping, dancing, doing things right. to uh, induce a trance, trance-like states. And he says that it's not so much a question of, uh, of whether, you know, stopping people from getting high is a matter of finding safer highs for right. them. And uh, the, the man from intoxication, his hypothesis was that we need to go even, even further than legalizing marijuana. We need to go and find better drugs that do the job of relaxation, whatever people use those drugs for. Uh, consciousness raising, whatever. Then we need to go beyond and actually uh, support the discovery of new drugs that are even less harmful to the body than, than some drugs we have nowadays, like cocaine and, and other. It's, well, to, um, to some extent, we already have that in marijuana, that it is the non-toxic drug, the uh, less lethal drug of all the drugs, le le lethal, excuse me, legal or illegal. Uh, I d also did some checking on the uh, one thing I wanted to mention before we got too far uh, about I was curious to find out just what the uh, penalties are for for marijuana possession in San Antonio uh -huh. and uh, I called the DA's office and I asked them about it and they said that uh, from two to four ounces uh, would be considered a misdemeanor A which would involve a uh, up to a two thousand dollar fine and one year in jail uh, -huh. uh under two ounces would be considered a misdemeanor B, which would be th maximum $1,000 and a jail time of six months maximum. 
right. what they could do. Of course, they said most first-time people get probation, uh, or I imagine having to go through some form of treatment, or something like that, mandatory as part of their probation. But I thought that was interesting because I know that in some states they have a higher penalty for usage of marijuana than they do for some crimes of violence. I thought that was a, a strange... Right. Yeah, there's no uniform marijuana law in each state. It varies drastically from being almost totally legal in Alaska, where people are allowed to grow it in their own homes for personal use, to some states where you have to do jail time for a simple possession. We have situations, too, where the, where the laws are not uh, equally uh, enforced. Enforced, you know. Uh, we had a case, uh, if you saw 60 Minutes a while ago, they had a guy who his his family was the top-notch uh, <laughs> Top notch in town. They were they were the big dogs in town. They owned everything, and uh, this guy got off with nothing for third time possession of cocaine. And another guy, poor working slob, got uh, had two joints, got caught with that, and wound up uh, doing something like two years. Right. So it's it's not it's not fairly enforced. That's one thing that uh, I think causes people to come down on the side of legalization. Right. What about the comment that that some people would say that that more people will. Uh, uh, use drugs if they legalize marijuana and then go on to harder stuff besides? Well, I think if marijuana was legalized uh, with, without the advertisement of television and the media backing it to try to encourage the youth to use marijuana, I think if we legalize marijuana with an education program, tell them about the dangers of all drugs, including marijuana, what little danger there is, that maybe the youth will not be so encouraged by seeing the commercials of some girl holding up a joint instead of a beer can to use that drug. I think it's the, the media has kind of helped drug use along in that way. Yeah, like, uh, I know that they don't uh, usually don't see uh, hard liquor advertised on television right. too often. But it seems to me like uh, that's one of the major concerns. That and the other major concern that people have who are not for legalization of marijuana would be driving, would, would be like the DWI. Right. And I've hear, heard some people say that once they find a reliable intoxilizer or some form of breathalyzer that would actually tell not if someone was a former user or had used a week ago, but could tell if a person was legitimately intoxicated, that that right there would spur the movement towards legalization. You know, would give it a great boost, is what some people have said, because mm -hmm. then they, the police could catch who was actually uh, intoxicated, not right. who, who had been a marijuana smoker. So. Well, I would think the important thing for the police to do would be stopping people that are not coordinated enough to drive, that are, not, that are incapacitated to drive. In other words, they give them a test to see if they can walk the straight line where they're on any drugs. The field sobriety test. Right, yeah. because people could be taking quaaludes and be stumbling all over, but they can pass all these other tests. That's true. Well, in general, it's, that's another show, but it is pretty right. easy to get a license and keep one in the United States. It's not much, uh, uh, it doesn't seem to be much... Uh, Many people worried about keeping an automobile out of the hands of nuts or other uh, strange people. But uh, another thing that I noticed uh, with with normal uh, when I first heard of them was back in like '73, and Keith Stroop was the right. the the founder and the president at the time. And at that time, he was he was uh, kind of a little bit away from that. He was sort of for legalization of all drugs. But I see that the the organization has really stuck with marijuana now. Do right. they think there's a possibility of getting it legalized anytime soon? Or? Well, now we believe the possibility is increasing because we're being oppressed more. There's more laws. It's starting to affect more of the people that they just sit in their home before and smoke a joint and not worry about anything, that they just get a small fine or something. And now it's coming up. There's going to be a $10,000 penalty for casual users. The Ed Bennett says that he wants to go after the, the guy that has the car, the house, the family, and he wants to affect them. This is where uh, some of these new drug laws and the war on drugs has really gotten me involved or a little bit irritated because uh, I'm one of those people who really couldn't care so much less, don't see much chance of myself having to face that kind of a charge. But uh, what gets me is some of the laws that are falling by the w wayside because mm -hmm. of it. It seems like we're neglecting the right to uh, individual property when they don't need to have a warrant in some cases. Certain right. cases, and yes, they have to have the justification, but still that's eroding away at our basic rights. Uh, right. Now I understand if you're stopped and searched, there's been a Supreme Court decision that amends the Miranda decisions 
which says that uh, if they suspect, for whatever reason, that you may have a contraband in the car, they are then allowed pretty much uh, open season to, to examine uh -huh. someone's vehicle from front to back, even the trunk. Reasonable suspicion. And then uh, an interesting thing that, I, that really got me uh, with all these laws, the new Texas stamp law, the tax stamp. Could you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Well, they're trying to uh, pass a tax on stamps. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, we have a that shirt. Up. That's because uh, it's such a joke. It's a, I believe it's. Is that a copy of the stamp? Yeah, it's a copy of the stamp. Now people are buying these stamps for collectors' items. Since it's, it's, it's such a joke, because in order to buy buy the stamp, you have to incriminate yourself by going down and writing your name down on a list downtown. There are some places that sell them without the name, but in order to get the stamp, you have to incriminate yourself. So nobody's going down there to buy them except for us. Well, it's important a to novelty. mention mention too that I don't think their, their purpose never was uh, this is what bothers me the purpose of the legislation was not to to tax something and make profit off it from the government right. or to to somehow have a piece of the action as is most taxes mm -hmm. you know which that alone would have bothered me enough but on top of that the real reason was to subvert I think to subvert the uh, due process uh, laws because for instance I heard of a case where one man was uh, arrested he took it was in the paper it was in the uh, San Antonio light man was arrested he had some marijuana in a van apparently a, a, quite an amount right. yes and he wound up they charged him with the tax violation what happens is the tax violation com came up before the other violation so he was forced to plead or lose his property the van right. that was so not only that, but they seize the assets, I believe, his home. When they do that, then you're no longer able to... If they seize your assets, you can't afford an attorney. Right. You're at the mercy of a court-appointed attorney. Mm -hmm. And we all know how good a representation... You can imagine a court-appointed attorney uh, right. whose heart is not in it like a man who's making money off the deal. Uh, the thing is, the tax stamp is only a means to get a hold of the assets of, the, of drug dealers, but it's being mm -hmm. used also for the little guy, I understand. Right, and that's the same thing with the $10,000 fine for casual users. It's to take away the power base, the money that people have to use to contact their legislatures or, or be in business or whatever. If, we, if they make us all poor and throw us out on the streets, then nobody's going to be listening to us. I think that's one of the effects of the, the new law is supposed to be. I've talked to some people in, about normal, and they've said, uh, well, I'd be afraid to join an organization like that. Uh, some people either think it's a FBI front to find <laughs> out who's smoking dope, like that would really be difficult to do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my experience with uh, with normal, all, you know, what I've seen all over the country in the last 10, 15 years, I've never seen any of that. But I do see a lot of people that are so paranoid. That's a, right. a real a real thing to them. They're afraid to join up even. Right. If people weren't so afraid, we could probably have maybe 100,000 members in San Antonio. But people are so afraid that the police are going to come, or some of, some of their friends or relatives are going to see them, or their employers, and they'll lose their jobs. Their family go after them, or the police will go after them. It's just, it's fear. Yeah, you're talking less than, uh, well, it's probably, what, something like 20% of the people in the United States, uh, they're uh, average or casual marijuana smokers, something right. like that. And I understand that, that it's something, it's closer to half of people who have tried, have tried it, so... The jails couldn't possibly hold all the people that would be guilty of, all right. of the offense. And that's another thing. They, there's no money for all the new prisons that they want to build to throw all the marijuana users in. They would have to build prisons from one coast to the next. And then the prisons are all full of people getting doing drugs, too. It doesn't solve anything throwing people in jail. There's no rehabilitation. It just throws them in with gangs where they're forced to join a gang for their own survival. I've also heard, too, from other people I know who've uh, been in jail and in prison have said that uh, it's just as easy to get drugs there as it is on the outside. Right. Which sort of points out the, I mean, if you can't keep people from getting drugs in prison, how are you going to keep them from... You know, what's the point of it? You know, it doesn't seem to, to do much. Um, so that, and that's another point I want to make, because Normal is not advocating the use of marijuana, are they? No. They're normal, not saying this is a good thing? No, we're, we're not abdicating the use of marijuana, and we're not, we don't smoke marijuana at our meetings or, or anything like that. 
were just a consumer lobby and an organization fighting for the rights of marijuana consumers. Um, but we do not we not support the use of marijuana. I see. Personally, that's so they're not advocating marijuana as a cure all or anything. Or <laughs> no, we believe it has medical properties, and if it's allowed to be uh, researched medically, then uh, it'll open up a treasure tro trove of uh, medical uses. Well, what are some of the medical uses they've already found? It well, useful? from the press research, because the research is controlled by the DEA, the Drug, Administra uh, Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, they, they have found that it does relieve pressure in the eyes of uh, glaucoma patients. And it's real good in relieving uh, nausea from people that have cancer that are taking chemotherapy. Um, it's used in uh, people who have epilepsy. It helps control their seizures. Um, uh, recently here in San Antonio, uh, an AIDS patient was the seventh patient in the United States to be allowed to legally use marijuana medically because it cuts down on the, some of the effects of the AIDS. Hmm. Um, these it are just seems a few rather pointless to tell someone who's terminally ill you, you can't right. have that, you might hurt yourself. Yeah. Right. Which I assume is the point of the law. Uh, that and to keep people from uh, going crazy under the influence of certain things. Right. Well, the head of the D Drug Enforcement Administration, John Lon, said that uh, he had talked to the the medical American Medical Society and and the, and the optometrist and all these people about uh, marijuana, and they told him that it didn't have any effects. He didn't he didn't talk to the doctors that were sneaking it to their patients or the patients that were using it and telling their doctor, "I'm having some good effects from this. I'm I'm having benefits from this, so I'm obtaining it legally because I can't get it on the open market." So we feel that. These laws are forcing patients that want to just use it medically to, to go on the black market and get marijuana that might be contaminated with Paraquat or not telling what, just impure medicine. Yeah, that's another concern some of the people who've uh, legalized have said the fact that the uh, this is mostly concerns the other drugs, but somewhat marijuana, is impurities and, and uh, inconsistency in the strength of things. Now, marijuana, you don't have a toxic substance, so you're not really worried about right. uh, overdose, that kind of thing. Uh, but I understand it comes, comes into the bigger issue of drug legalization. Uh, my main concern about it is uh, the restriction of, of the rights as an individual. That's where I get concerned about right. it. Because it bothers me. It's only how far of a step is it from police saying, well, uh, we can come search this house without a warrant, to, well, we can come search uh, your house without a warrant for a stolen property. Or for any other reason, right? You know, looking for some kind of terrorist propaganda, right? Or you know, it could it could extend quite a bit to the point where, yeah, you can have a society of law and order, but it sort of goes in direct relationship to how much freedom you have, right? Yeah, we believe that the the drug laws might be being used as a gateway to just destroy our democracy. Our constitution is now is in great danger because uh, we've talked to people and they say they're willing to give up. Freedom in this country, the Constitution, to, to stop drugs. Well, of course, once we give up the Constitution, the drugs are still going to be here. We're just not going to be free. In a way, it's kind of used as a fear. Right. Uh, like a, uh, a whipping boy. <laughs> right. Sort of a scapegoat, you know, to blame everything on the drugs, you know. I see that a lot in the news nowadays. It almost seems anytime there's, there's gang violence, anytime there's uh, violence uh, having to do with customs, you know, it's always drug smugglers. Right. You know? <laughs> Nothing to do with the homeless or the people they get on the street. a buzzword and that's it, you know, right. and uh, they latch on to it. Of course, uh, I understand one of the things that has happened, strangely enough, with marijuana, the potency has gone up over the years because of the more people in America, I understand, are switching to growing it at home right. or growing or buying homegrown than what's going out of the country to buy Colombian or, or other. Right. The Reagan Bush administration put so much pressure on uh, the imported marijuana that forced the, the marijuana consumers in the United States to start producing their own. And we started producing some of the highest potency marijuana in the world. And we actually are an exporting nation to certain other countries. Hmm. It's amazing because I remember back in like 1970 or so, it was uh, like 90% of the American uh, uh, drugs were, were coming from Mexico and other countries right. nowadays. 
And your group here in San Antonio, uh, do you have normal meetings or uh, normal meetings, uh, regular meetings? <laughs> well, we're hopefully going to start meeting at the Strands of Peace and Justice Center, the 1305 uh, North Flores, uh -huh. uh, last Tuesday every month. Okay. And uh, people can contact you and get a hold of all these uh, different uh, pamphlets and stuff. Right. That's information. They send us a self-addressed envelope, self-stamped. Bumper, bumper sticker. Yeah, ask them to send a self self addressed envelope. Don't don't invite people to send you stuff and promise to send them. You, you have people getting stuff for free. Right. Uh, you'll be out twenty five cents each time. Julian, if people uh, wanted to join the organization, uh, we'll have we'll put the address up at the end of the thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, what kind of uh, things can they expect out of the organization? Well, with our membership uh, dues, we give them a, a normal T shirt and a uh, Texas normal bumper sticker and a newsletter. We'll get that going again. Okay, and you said you had some plans uh, in the future for uh, talking to City Hall? Yes, I'm trying, currently trying to make an appointment with uh, Mayor Lau Cockrell to uh, speak about a $5 fine for San Antonio for possession of marijuana. Uh, would that be what amount? I mean, Well, we'd probably make it an ounce or less. Try so you'd be suggesting, can, can San Antonio do that? I mean, would they be able to... Seems well, to me like couldn't couldn't someone say, well, there's a high, there's a another law like a state law that's uh, that's more. Well, we're not sure about that. We're gonna we're gonna find out though. Because I know some other cities have done that. I remember Ann Arbor, Michigan, went to that. They, of course, that's a college town, and and the college students in the '70s got together and said, hey, we've got more people here than we do uh, citizens. So since we've all got the right to vote, they voted in mm -hmm. a liberal uh, council from amongst the students. And they passed a five dollar smoking uh, fine. Right. And from what I understand, even that was very loosely enforced. Right. Well, this would give the police opportunity to make a choice between giving someone a five dollar fine, and if they have emergency, they can respond to the emergency instead of having to arrest the person for possession of marijuana, and let the robbery or the rape or the murder, or whatever else is going on, the uh, happen while he's taking the, some, a prisoner down for marijuana use. Yeah, I know that police uh, police time spent processing drug uh, claims or drunken disorderly that kind of thing is really eats up a lot of uh, eats up a lot of their time. Right. I saw even on television uh, in some of the campaigns uh, against the rollback, they were using that saying that uh, San Antonio has 30 drug dealers for every police officer, and a vote against the rollback would be uh, I mean a vote for the rollback would be a vote for the drug dealers. Right. So once again, it's used as a whipping post. Right. You know? As if putting more additional police on the street is going to solve the problem. Yeah. It's not. The, uh, now on the, uh, the subject of, of marijuana as a, like a victimless crime, um, would you think that, uh, we'd, I'd asked before about do you think more people would be using it, but you didn't, you didn't really answer on that. Do you think more people well, would? Uh, I would hope that somebody that was using a harder drug, such as alcohol or cocaine, might switch to a legal drug like marijuana instead of using both. They might just use marijuana without the fear of being arrested and have that as their drug of choice. So you think the marijuana use uh, probably would go up? It might go up, but I think that there might be a corresponding drop in other drug use. Yeah, I would think that there would be a slight increase. I know a lot of people who say, oh, it wouldn't necessarily, but, you know, Actually right. speaking, common sense wise, if it was legal, there'd be a lot of people who uh, probably had never tried it before and said, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Right. Um, and of course, a lot of people are concerned by saying you make it legal, then it puts a stamp of approval on it mm -hmm. by the government. Uh, but right so, now, it's the forbidden fruit that draws all the kids into the black market. And it draws them up to that black market where somebody hands them a crack pipe instead of a joint. It says they lied about the the joint, they're lying about the crack. And when they smoke the crack, they find out they weren't lying about the crack. And there was a big problem was credibility in the 60s and 70s when they were trying to give drug education and they were uh, coming up with uh, situations where uh, kids would be told, this will make you do this strange thing, this will right. make you do that strange thing, and see colors and flying animals. And then their brother comes home from college and they find out that wasn't the case with their brother. Next thing you know, credibility right. shot out the window and nobody's listening to the message at all. Right. Um, one, of the th one of the things I think you mentioned, didn't you mention me something before about uh, if marijuana was legalized, the possibility of taxing it? Well, yes, we and believe that it. that could be used for? Yeah, we believe it should be taxed, and uh, 
the money being used to re to treat uh, for education and, and to treat people that need help on all drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe a tax um, for growing it uh, for like as it is in, in uh, Alaska where they where they are able to grow some for personal use. They have a tax on it up there. For well, I'm not sure about that, but I'm saying if they were, if we're able to legalize it and allow the personal use, maybe some might pay like a fifty dollar tax a year for home for growing it at home, and not allow them to sell it or anything, just for personal use. For yeah, I understand adults. people can do that with uh, uh, whiskey and beer. You know, right. My dad used to make uh, used to make wine, and I don't I understand this. I don't know about I think this it's state. Like five gallons for beer or something like that for a person. Yeah, beer and beer and whiskey were more strictly regulated, but. I think that would be a very interesting, uh, very interesting experiment to see what would happen uh, if it was legalized. Well, uh, that's about all for today's show. Uh, you want to give the address one more time, uh, just to. At any rate, you can contact Free Thought Forum if you need to get a hold of any of the people that we have on our show at any time. Do you have the? Yeah, okay. Uh, our local address is uh, P.O. Box 34016, San Antonio, Texas, 78233. And our phone number is 654-8720. And that's an answering machine. You can leave a message on there. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jeff. And uh, keep us posted. Let us know how it goes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to Duke or dictator. No person can deny.